Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a go now. Yeah. Thank you. So continue. And then restart here. And let's go ahead. And so this is kind of a work in progress notebook for me. Um, and so uh, the idea here is that um, so yeah, sometimes you know we get the the warnings. This is saying that I already had a desk um, already running, nothing to worry about. So reading in the shape file for the forest, reading my query, and then uh, loading the data from that query. Here I'm actually not using load, load ARD because it's actually uh, not that necessary. Oops. Then we're going to go ahead and mask the data. So one of the interesting things is when you get this data from a shapefile, when you query so um, I guess I should slow down a little bit here. And so in the actual uh, use case here, so oftentimes we have some sort of GeoJSON, uh, which is the area we want to query, right? And what we can do is as long as it's in geojson format and so let's say you get a shape file or something you can convert from geojson to that either with a python tool i know there's like there's several python tools that are able to do this uh you know shapely or fiona or something like that um you could also just use qgis if that's what you're comfortable with and um so i make sure so i read in the and here i'm using geopandas once i actually have the geojson file that i want uh, I use GeoPandas to actually read in the file. I'm then able to then map it. And what it'll do is it'll actually draw a bounding box around this for me. And that's why I'm loading in this geopolygon for the geometry. Just it automatically creates the extent for me. But when I get it, it's going to be the full rectangle, right? So I need to also um, create a, uh, let's see, um, below this, whoops. Below this, I can actually, let's take a look at mask here. And um, you can see here that mask does not actually have that much uh, stuff in it for the array. It's got the right, it's got the same coordinates, but it's actually just zeros and ones. And basically uh, it's drawn, uh, basically um, uh, the shape in an x array for me and that's what i'm using to actually mask off the data so i'm just saying you know wherever is you know the data set masked is wherever this is true this array is true so i i, I can't really blow it up more than that um actually let's do a quick plot so you can see that it's one where on the inside of this geojson and it's zero on the outside. And that's what I'm using to actually mask off the data and just look at just the shape I want. Um, and then uh, we could create a time series, right? Uh, this is just helpful to kind of see what's going on. One thing about the time series though, is it's not gonna do well um, kind of with the mask. So I'm just looking at this whole area. It looks like there's been a change in vegetation. I'd kind of like to quantify this and maybe get a different look at it. I can feed into RGB a different area or, or different bands if I would like. I'm, I'm going kind of quickly because I hope, hopefully this is a familiar to everybody. And then uh, the next step for usually is that we have an array of indices that we would probably want to look at at any given time. And so I can go ahead and calculate all of those at once. And what we weren't really sure of is kind of like how the vegetation was changing over time. And we would also like to see if these, all of these just generally agree all at the same time. And so what I can do is um, I calculate all the different vegetation indices I'm looking, I'm interested in. Uh, and then I, then I kind of want to go ahead and take a look at each one of these at a time. So I can use the built-in plot function and I can provide kind of a meaningful color map so I don't get all these confused. And it looks like that over time, right, we had some greening uh, from 2017 to, to 2018, and it was getting even greener in 2019. 
but now uh the uh vegetation looks like it's subsided back away and i don't know if this is because so this doesn't tell me all that much on its face right this is just kind of telling me how the vegetation is evolving through time um but something more interesting to actually look at would be uh perhaps kind of the change from year to year right and so i can actually uh differentiate this with a built-in function uh in x-ray and this is kind of what i wanted to talk about which i find kind of handy to maybe highlight each one of these uh to highlight change when when you're trying to investigate that so um basically the uh on the right here i i, sh I should maybe use a different color map so um Uh, we can stick with this color map, but basically red is going to be wherever we've... I find it confusing because red is where we're gaining vegetation. Um, and then uh, blue is going to be where we're losing vegetation. And so basically the idea here is I load some data. I look at it probably in RGB to make sure everything's kind of looking okay. Like, you know, the fact that I don't have any clouds and whatnot and just kind of get... Uh, a human understanding of what's going on. And then I'll then calculate an indice and then I'll use differentiate on that indice to kind of highlight areas of change. And so uh, areas of red are areas of basically a vegetation gain. And then uh, areas in blue are kind of vegetation loss. And this kind of agrees with our, our I intuition that we have a gain and a gain. And it actually wraps back around here. But uh, we don't really need to pay attention to this last one. We have a gain and a gain, and then finally a loss. And so I find this really helpful because this is, you know, uh, kind of a one-liner to just be able to look at the gain over time, right? Like I can get the slope. Um, and the other interesting thing here is that I could also then, um, you know, group these through time to maybe get like an idea of the variance right like if i take the average of the slope it's going to be telling me generally which direction um the uh uh it's a little bit misleading because if i had something cyclic right if i take the average of the derivative right it'll it'll give me zero if something stays constant it'll get me zero but what it what i can do if i take the average then is i could highlight like an ongoing trend, right? Like I could, I could highlight something, you know, constantly increasing or constantly decreasing, right? And that might be really interesting um, to me. And so that'll probably be kind of the next steps in this notebook, but I just wanted to highlight it as a uh, exploration. You can do the same with uh, enhanced vegetation index. See if the story kind of agrees there. I'm going to go ahead and run all these. Um, and so... Uh, the enhanced vegetation index looks the same, right? We're getting, we start out kind of low and it gets more positive, more positive, and then it's a little bit kind of negative here. And so large vegetation increase from 2017 to 2018, smaller one from 2018 to 2019, right? And then a decrease um, after that. So uh, yeah, um, and it's the same story for, uh, M savvy and uh, as well. So that's that's kind of helpful for just kind of making sure we understand like trends in our data as we're just kind of starting out. Um, another place we were looking at was actually uh, looking for kind of coastal erosion or change on the island of Zanzibar. So let's do uh, restart kernel and clear all outputs, restart here just kind of for demonstration purposes and i'm actually this is also i would also encourage you that um if you are just kind of wanting a nice cloudless composite we caught, talked a lot about the geo median and the geo mad products um i'm actually using those here i'm loading the loading in the gm s2 annual and so if you just roll if you just load in this is kind of you know this is a lot of the same boilerplate. I have my area for Zanzibar. I have two different buffer buffers here for my horizontal and vertical because um, 
I want to load the minimum amount of data necessary, right? So I'm just loading a rectangle. Um, my start and end time. I build the query I want to send to the data cube with my X range, my Y range, and the different uh, indices I have. And um, so as in the GM product, the Geomad product, right? If I'm loading the regular bands, those are actually going to be an annual geomedian value for that whole year uh, in that band. So just by loading the red, green, and blue, um, I can actually get, that still looks good. I'm gonna load the data. Just by ro like loading the red, green, and blue, I can get that geomedian composite. Um, which is nice, especially if I'm just like kind of interested in yearly change and I'm not trying to drill down on maybe like a specific capture. And so here, uh, w the real question I want to answer kind of quickly is for the island of Zanzibar, which is actually quite a large area. Um, I want to point out that I'm actually loading it at quite a low resolution here, uh, you know, 50 meters by 50 meters, right? Which means uh, that even though I'm loading a huge area, it's not going to take up that mem much memory when I do it. I want to quickly ask myself, where have there been changes uh, on the island, right? So I'm going to make, I'm going to look at it and see in RGB year over year. Um, this, uh, I guess, this is also worth mentioning again that if you, since I have two different buffers here a horizontal and a vertical one right like uh it, th this kind of section i've taken is a little bit longer and skinny uh, i need to correct for that when i do my plotting so i'm providing an aspect ratio of what the what the aspect ratio of the rectangle is because i'm not just doing a square um and then i'm also doing a size because this is a quite a large area and i actually want to be able to blow this up and look for areas of change and one thing that's, you know, sometimes with remote sensing and like looking at the satellite data, no news is good news, right? Like if I don't actually see a change, maybe this is kind of good, um, depending on what your baseline is. But it's least from 2017 to 2019, uh, the island of Zanzibar, specifically its coasts, look quite stable just visually, right? But again, I'm way zoomed out. I don't really know if I'm seeing everything just visually. Like the the changes might be kind of subtle, right? Especially because the coast is like this very little thin area, uh, you know, <laughs> that that can be hard to spot changes in from basically this zoom level, uh, basically from this altitude that we're looking at. Um, notice though, in RGB, we can still see some changes, like kind of this. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but like this red patch seems to, this red color seems to be shrinking and I could investigate that if I was interested in it. And so a lot of times it can be interesting to, you know, sample things at a low resolution and create these um, film strips. Another area is this, this area here uh, seems to have been kind of, you know, maybe lost some vegetation and then still didn't have some vegetation, but maybe seems to be recovering here. And then another one are these white areas. I don't know if these are buildings or, you know, maybe some sort of industrial activity, but they seem to actually kind of um, increase over time and change. And so I, this just gives me an idea of places I might want to look at. But here I'm specifically interested in the coast. So what I'm going to do next is calculate a water indices, right? The Modified Normalized Difference Water Index, or MNDWI for short. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to take a look at this again, just to see, did this actually capture what I wanted to capture? One second. Okay. So now I have an idea of something, you know, we're highlighting the land in blue um, and the uh, water is red, right? So basically, um, you know, very positive values are going to be water, very negative values are generally going to be land. And so the idea here is that I still don't see a huge amount of change. And 
I would like to maybe highlight that change. So what I want to look for are basically pixels that are becoming um, basically more positive, right? Because if it's going from land to water in the MNDWI index, right, that'll give me a positive slope. And so I could then use from this very zoomed out vantage point uh, this differentiate. Take a second. And I know this this may be this may not come through due to the kind of the compression. Um, but I can actually sort of see the outline of the island, right? Like I'm not so concerned about what's happening in the water itself. I'm concerned about the edges of the island, and I'm concerned kind of what those edges are. And so like here in this in this bay region, these are very, very dark, right? And remember with our scale here, the darker this is, it's gonna have a negative slope, right? And the more like green yellow it so the more purple it's having a negative slope which means it's actually becoming land right and with the yellow green it's actually going to be positive um which means it's actually becoming water and so what i'm kind of interested in is areas that may be becoming more water and what i kind of see here is that this is actually kind of a consistent light part of the coast in this kind of crescent here. And it looks like it, it may have gained some back because that's kind of dark there. And so this is actually probably going to be my area of interest. And um, based, to based on talking about this uh, use case, you know, this is an area apparently with a lot of uh, kind of like tourist beaches and stuff like that. So it actually might be of a lot of interest um, either whether maybe the, the um, use of that beach is having an effect on it or something like that, but we don't really know yet. And so uh, what I'll do is define an extent. And what I want to do is make like a little, like, so I can then go from this very large zoom out thing into the small area um, to try to zoom in. I create a new query. My notebook will cooperate. There it goes. And we could take a new look at this area. And visually, I don't see that much, but then graphing it actually and animating it with an X array, right? We could actually see that there's probably, like in this area of activity, it seems like there's distinctly, you know, some thinning of the actual coast in these areas. Um, but again, it's actually remarkably stable, right? Like compared to the kind of area in St. Louis we looked at previously with the coastal erosion, um, it, it's actually pretty pretty stable. So a, a lot of the times you may have um, a hunch about something or you're just curious about, about how a certain aspect uh, that you can remotely sense, for instance, the coasts or maybe vegetation or something like that are changing. And I kind of wanted to bring to light um, the takeaway, or what I want you to take away from today, is being able to use uh, this differentiate function that's built into X-Ray to kind of like highlight changes, especially during kind of the early exp exploration of the data uh, in the data cube. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, any questions? Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, the questions are welcome. Uh, also on the same, maybe the same example you have for Zanzibar, could we possibly try it for a small area somewhere else? Yeah, let's, let's take a look. So this now will be guided by any of the colleagues in the room to give us an area they want so that it's more interactive. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I have a question. Yes. Oh, yes. sorry. Yes, uh, about the MDWI, could you please explain again the the change in slope and what it means with the level of water? Right. So the important thing is to kind of understand the indice you're running specifically because different indices will have different ranges and they will be kind of like looking at... Um, uh, so, so like... Sometimes, like with a vegetation index, maybe you want a really high value, maybe you want like a low value. Like it depends on the indice, right? And so, what? Uh, let me actually share my screen again. Um, do, do, do. Share. So, here with MNDWI, 
Um, basically, the way in, in MNDWI works, right, is it tries to cla- it tries to move everything around to zero, right? And the idea is that things that are greater than one are going to be water, and things that are less than one are going to be land. Is the is the overall goal of the um, uh, the index, and it has kind of like some side effects. Uh, and MBDWI actually gets used in other indices, but I won't go into that. But basically, the idea here is that if I have a pixel in the M- once I've calculated MNDWI over time, right? If I have a pixel here that's becoming um, more negative, right? Like if it's going from like, you know, 0.5 to negative 0.5, it's basically moving from being classified as um, uh, uh, water to land, right? And the the reverse is true, right? If I have something being, you know, that has a value of negative 0.5 to 0.5, right? That's gonna be a positive slope. And that means it's, going from being classified as land to being class or, or not being classified. We're not really actually doing any classification. The mm-hmm. pixel spectrum, right, is basically going from being more land-like to being more water-like. I, I should be kind of clear. Um, the, over- the overall indice is supposed to separate land and water, but um, by looking at that slope, I can get an idea of the, the change over time. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. So Pimba Island near Zanzibar. Okay. Yeah, I think the results might look similar. It's always good to see. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, take a look here. So, uh, da, da, da. so get rid of this. Uh, this is going to be way too big, probably. I'll probably have to. Oh, no, actually, not that bad. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll kind of, um, trim this. So I actually maybe want it like right there. So we'll do our latitude. Just kind of trimming here. I know this this is kind of a manual process, um, but this is the way I do it. Um, Let's do that, and then we can bring in the horizontal buffer probably a little bit. So we'll just do point two, and let's try point three. Not quite. We still need to go a bit um, more west. So I think. Uh, let's try positioning it there, right? So I'm actually kind of happy with the latitude. And then uh, what do I need to do for the, I think I just need to make the vertical buffer a little bit bigger. Let's go back to 0.4 just in the interest of time. This may be way off. That may be too big of a correction. Yeah, let's go down to it. Sorry. So, Brian, this is the notebook yes. for Kyria. Yeah, yes. This was the initial notebook that we kind of wanted to explore uh, the data with. Um, I'm just trying to dial this in here. Like, so it's. Yep. So because uh, Bob little... would like to see if it can work for a small uh, city or a small town in Burkina Faso. Yeah. Okay, so that looks good-ish, right? Like, we're at, so this is a large area. We're still at that low resolution. So this shouldn't take too long to load. Hmm. So I've kind of tuned that query here. Let's take a look. Let's run that. Going to take a moment. Okay, let's take a look at the RGB for this point period in time. Okay. So right away, you know, the island definitely looks looks different. 
uh, definitely some different geography. We can see, you know, some maybe very, some fields and stuff. <laughs> has very special color reels. Uh, very, 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 very special. I think I need okay. to get, I need to get Edward there for some field work. <laughs> some really tough, hard field work to. Uh, go go and spend on some beautiful beaches, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So, I don't know if we'll see any dramatic change, but we can try to see if we see anything by differentiating. it Again, to me, this looks like it's actually pretty steady, steady over time. You kind of have to go back and forth I have to move the Zoom meeting out of the way to kind of look at this um, to see if we see any changes in the coastal regions. I'm kind of looking at these these islands uh, off of the island. You know these you know the kind of barrier island areas. Uh, it looks quite stable to me. And looking at the differentiate, yeah, this almost looks even more stable. It's even harder to see the outline here. Um, we do see actually some substantial change from, uh, well, actually, that's the wraparound. So I don't trust the last one that much. But from year to year, we actually may see some uh, gain in the coastline up here at the top that might be worth uh, zooming into. And that, take, that takes a little bit more doing. Uh, and we see, I think, some gain down here at this bottom island. So maybe I want to take a look at this bottom island because I can see that it seems like there's some substantial change. Um, and that would be my next area of investigation. Um, so looks like I got way far afield here. Yep. Just to give you a small response is that, uh, the area yeah. cloud cover is quite not so good and yep. possibly having the geomad, it was maybe at very specific times of the year that they had an average of some values. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's a, there's a. A question um, about the. S sorry, I was reading a. I was reading a chat while you were talking. I, I kind of miss. I tuned out a little bit. What, sorry, what did you say again? I was saying the, the the issue is that the area has a lot of cloud cover, and possibly the geomat was quite. Some work was done to get an image. <laughs> Yes, I, I uh, especially in these kind of coastal areas, they tend to be quite cloudy. Um, and the other thing is that uh, I wanted to point out another thing that could impact the Geomad, right? Is that, you know, specifically these notebooks, we're using the Geomad pr product. And so the, the chat here, um, I guess from Baco, is uh, talking about a period from 1990 to 2000. And, um, with the Sentinel, so the, the Geomad stuff is run on Sentinel, right? Which means on the sandbox, it really, it only goes back to 2017. So this is really designed, I guess, for the more, you know, looking at more recent changes. With going back that far from 1990 to 2000, your only option is really Landsat. Uh, I guess, I mean, I shouldn't say that. Maybe you want to use uh, a SAR product or something like that that could go back that far as well. Um, but at least visually... Um, Landsat's probably going to be uh, the main product you're going to look at. And um, one of the uh, more difficult parts of that is as you go farther back in time, right, the more inconsistent the data gets for Landsat, that the coverage is, is less, con less consistent. Okay. So let's, what do I mean by that? So when we go to our products and we go, um do uh so for 90 for 1990 to 2000 right uh you're really going to be stuck with um the surface reflectance the ls5 surface reflectance this is going to go from 84 to 2011 and then once you're in the early 2000s um you'll be able to use landsat 7 but that's really only for 99 to 2000 here um and we can and when we look at Landsat 5 specifically, uh, da -da, extents on the Explorer, you can see that we get better captures in the northern part of Africa, but the it's kind of a modeled how many actual uh, captures we get 
in these different areas, right? Um, so, like, let's say if we were to... Oops. My bad. Uh, so, back again. So, let's say we wanted to actually um, zoom in here. Uh, for instance, on that area of the forest, uh, and we were kind of looking at just, like, the tile or the... Uh, I can actually click on that tile area, right? That gathering area. And I can actually go through and look at the specific dates that are available. And so I can see that there are several available from 84 here. Uh, then a few more from 86, but not nearly a full year, right? Like if, if this was capturing actually every 16 or eight days, right? Um, depending on whatever platform you're looking at, um, the, uh, this is not a full year of captures, right? Like, so in eighty in eighty four, I'm only going to have one, two, three, four captures, and hopefully, you know, none of them are cloudy. <laughs> like if if a couple of these are cloudy, that leaves me with like very little data to go on. And so looking for the period of uh, 1990 to 2000, um, there's actually a lot less data than you would probably expect. So and it looks like uh, you know Burkina Faso is going to be kind of in a similar um, uh, boat here, um, for this area. Um, so doing this, uh, maybe, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can erase that. I don't, there we go. Um, I'm not totally sure if that's going to work. So, uh, we can go to this area if you want but I'm not going to be able to look at that without doing more change to the notebook. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily be going to be able to go that far back in time. Uh, annotate. Okay. I think I'm out of the annotate mode. Right. Oops. Copy from chat. I think I can send you the, the share file for the area shared by Baco. Okay. This, this permission. There you go. Okay, let me see if I can download it. And um let's just save this to my downloads. Well, I guess why we have we have a few more minutes remaining. Does anybody? I mean, we can keep. Ta I'll, I'll keep working on this. But if anybody has anything else to present, or has a use case they're working on and would like to talk about, I think why uh, do a little data wrangling here with the shape file. We can uh, um, maybe talk about anybody else's struggles, <laughs> use cases, interests. Yep. So for this example, for Baco, this is a notebook working inland for mainland which will be a topic for land cover, which is, I think is of interest to most people. Yeah. Mm. But it's something we're currently, I, I think within the use cases that we're trying to work on, that it seems like a lot of people want um, to be able to do their own land cover classifications. And um, as a small aside, if you have, so, mm -hmm. There's two ways to do your own land cover classification, right? To have your own kind of like spectral characteristics that you're working on. To do a like from the start, do sample pixels that you, you know the classification of and make those classifications. And that's basically the two ways, right? You either know the spectral characteristics or you go in and divide up the spectral characteristics either based on some sort of separation classification, like you, you actually kind of try to separate it out doing some sort of like principal component analysis or something like that, or you have some like on the ground, uh, you have some ground truth data that you're interested in. So um, let me see if I can unzip this. Uh, da, da, da. Bear with me. I'm sorry. I know this is not the most ex exciting thing to... Uh, <laughs> I guess watch how actually I don't think you can even see what's going on right now so um, 
Yeah, so this is a shape file. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to do this with QGIS real quick because I can, I know it outputs a nice thing, uh, a nice extent with the GeoJSON. Uh huh. Any other questions, comments, concerns, haikus, poems, songs? <laughs> I think uh, uh, we can welcome Stella. Uh, Stella, how are you? You've been very quiet. Uh... Hey, I'm, I'm doing fine. Yeah, I guess school, school has kept me so busy, but it's interesting to follow with what everyone does. Thank you, Stella, for joining us. Uh, Dr. Kelebogi, any question for Brian? Hello, did, did you? No, I, I, I'm okay. I'm just following. That's fine. Thank you. It's, it's good to uh, ask because uh, since your camera is off, maybe you're struggling with uh, what's happening. It's just checking. Uh, David Dongo, you're okay with us? Everything is going on well? Uh, thank you, sir. Everything is going well. Uh, I'm following. Are you inviting everybody for the RIC conference? Since now you're the you're the host of this big event. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, we, we've been sending info to to the whole team, and I think uh, Brian, you've got some impressive things that I believe can be shared. Uh, I hope you also register. We see how much we can. Uh, Oh, probably you, uh, I believe Dr. Mubea had already mentioned to, to the establishment team. Uh, you're all welcome to present. We have, uh, I think, one more day to, to slot your uh, to, to, to slot your presentation as well as register. Uh, thank you, uh, your abstract. Excellent. All right. So it looks like we're looking at this area here. And so what you can do is you can just right click and then export, save feature as, I'm gonna save it as a GeoJSON. Uh, let's give this a name. And then I want to, I always click this to include the extent because that's actually, and I wanna calculate the current uh, extent from the layer because that's gonna be kind of what it uses to import the uh, data. And then uh, where are we going to, actually, let's give this a specific place. Uh, I think I want this, let's just put this in my downloads and save that uh, here. Save, okay. All right, there we go. We can close this. Ah, there's the link, very good, all right. So let's then take this and, well, I'm just gonna use, I guess, this example for the, I can just drag that there. Hopefully it uploads, looks like that was successful. And so going back in here, uh, we want to look at uh, what was the specific. Sorry, I I seem to have one in one ear out the other. What was what would what specifically did we want to look at in this area? Um, maybe just the geomat or something. So to do this, we could take uh, we could take uh, the example um, here. And so what I'm actually going to do is this should be you can do copy. And then copy path, and I can just paste this here. I actually don't need this full part because I'm already in this working directory. Let's see if we that reads the attribute ID does not exist. Let's see if this got formatted. All right, okay. So uh, we could just let's see. Uh, admin ID, I think is what I think I need to use here. So uh, you just need to basically tell it to select the actual like geometry, right? Um, 
And since we only have one thing, this is not that important. If you had multiple uh, shapes, um, it would be kind of necessary. Okay, so I think let's just check to see if we're still in the right area. Yeah, that looks okay. Uh, I think based on this. Yeah, all right, we're good. Okay. And let's go ahead and then load that data. Sometimes the shortcuts don't work. I'm not really sure why. And then load the data. This is where we need to have some nice elevator music or something. <laughs> so I'm just waiting music. As it loads this area, I'll this may be. Time, Brian. What was that? I had to bring the haiku next time. Yeah, right. Um, I'm actually kind of wondering how much data I'm loading here. Shouldn't be too bad. There it goes. Okay. Uh, I guess we actually don't really need to look at the mask, but I guess I guess that's what I'm. That was from earlier. Minimize that. Blow this up a little bit. Huh. This may have a problem with the masking, but let's go ahead and look at this in RGB. Yeah, actually, I want to just do, look at... Uh, okay, hey, it worked, okay. So, looking through time here, I'm going to move this out of the way. All right. I, was there some specific change we were trying to maybe look at? What, you know, maybe I should run in a specific indice or something? Or, um, For this area, for this area, area in Burkina Faso. Yes, it's a dry, dry area, uh, Brian. Okay. But what we want to see is uh, if uh, in terms of vegetation. Ah, okay, perfect. Okay, so that's kind of what this notebook set up to do. Okay. Um. So the uh, let's see if we can. So if there, if it's dry, okay. So. We can get into we can have a quick discussion i guess about vegetation indices in general um so there's the um there's like ndvi that i think people are familiar with there's evi the leaf area index and all that ah look at this okay so it looks like maybe it's kind of greening over time maybe a little bit um, it seems to be getting darker but that's kind of low enough resolution that i can't really tell what, for sure what what's going the, on the, yes the, the small the small it's it's a dam it's water body where is it? what is that like this it's a dam here or yeah i have so one place uh, that the dark one at the top yes this is this is a water body correct yeah water body yeah the dark okay. one is a water body. yeah yeah i think that gets trimmed off in the masked data set but yeah okay so the uh so i'm gonna actually run these vegetation indices so we have the normalized difference vegetation index which i think people are familiar with um enhanced vegetation index is often good for very densely um uh densely vegetated areas so this would probably not be like a good candidate that evi is good at capturing for instance change in like canopy vegetation it doesn't what can I kind of happen when you have really dense vegetation is that NDVI has a tendency to saturate at the higher end, right? So it, it, you lose out on some of the dynamic range and you can't capture the full amount of change in vegetation. So EVI could be good for that. Um, then I think MSAVI is probably the best candidate for this region. And so MSAVI stands for the Modified Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index. And so the idea here is that 
it accounts actually for the background soil. So anytime you're going to have like maybe uh, areas of bare soil that are mixed in with your areas of vegetation, M-Savvy can be a really good choice uh, to actually look at this. Uh, and then NDCI is actually the normalized difference chlorophyll index. And it's, it's only available um, in, uh, uh, for Sentinel data because Sentinel has these extra bands in it, these red edge bands that are designed to sense uh, chlorophyll concentration right there at the border in the IR range. Um, uh, because there's a, there's a there's this huge fall off and reflectance of chlorophyll, and so there's three bands there that are actually designed to sense it. So let's go ahead and mask that, and let's let's look at some plots of the vegetation and disease. See what we can see, and then that'll probably be it for today. Hopefully, I can uh, move through these. I, I could probably provide you with a copy of this. Um, file if if that's something you're interested in it's still very rough i haven't filled in all the boxes and all the explanations but if if it would be of use to you i could definitely pass that along okay i'm just going to run all of these at once and they'll just start showing up as we uh, as they calculate so yeah i mean especially for an area this large this, this is going to take a second. <laughs> it looks like it's almost done with the first. So um, I, I, one thing here is that, uh, okay, so I actually got an error with the, um, the different, for the actual difference here. And I'll have to investigate value. Blank is not a value valid value oh because i'm i'm having okay so it probably has to do with the way we oh it's because i added this <laughs> i never filled in the the color map so let's see if that'll calculate now so i could actually adjust this by inserting an aspect ratio so notice how it like squashed this right is that it's expecting the dimensions to actually be a square um and so uh yeah so it looks like the vegetation blowing this up a little bit it looks like it was pretty green starting in 2017 and then 20 2018 and 2019 might have been kind of lower vegetation but again being very zoomed out like this it, it's hard to draw like real conclusions right this is just kind of getting a handle on areas to look at um I imagine this is probably some areas of smaller water bodies, probably these small, smaller, very negative areas. Uh, but yes. Aha, okay. So yeah. The, the, so what I would do here, so one thing that I kind of am... Uh, noticing here, right, is that there's not a whole lot of change, right? These water bodies really start to stand out because they are probably changing in their extent, uh, and that's why we that that's why they show up here. Um, and uh, these these areas are kind of interesting, but I think these are also water bodies uh, in the south here. So, uh, what one thing that could be happening here is that the actual range of change could be kind of being blown out. So I want to look at my um, yeah, so NDVI going from two to two does NDVI itself should never exceed one or negative negative one. So um, the change is like the maximum change is like from two to two. So I believe what's probably happening here is my color map is actually being uh, blown out um, uh, from uh, side to side. So you can actually do um, like a, a min and a max value. Um, I actually don't want to do that. I, I, I want to look at the rest of these indices. But uh, sometimes it's necessary to kind of adjust, manually adjust the dynamic range to see, uh, you know, if, if these, wa this spe these specific water bodies probably have a large amount of change going from, you know, from side to side. 
And so what I actually want to do is um, maybe look at a smaller range of change in order to kind of bring out the nuances here. Because like these are just very, very faint changes right now that are hard to hard to see. Um, yeah. So yeah, but this is kind of confirming that the the blue was kind of getting so we can may have had kind of like a loss in vegetation in the first time here but then it kind of slowly greened back up because that looks on my monitor that looks faintly red but yeah they're taking a moment to run um kenneth is there anything else we should uh cover I think, today i think this was nice and uh, if you could share the notebook on the on the WhatsApp or whichever, so that it can it can reach Paco. Paco is part of this group in the WhatsApp as well, so that we can try okay. to support him to run on his side as a as a, as an assignment. So he he promised to uh, to present next week. Oh, okay, exciting! Uh, <laughs> I look like forward to it. I was putting him on the spot, but uh, he wants to understand how step nope. by step. Yeah, no pressure. Cool. <laughs> no pressure at all. Honestly, any sort of work in progress or anything like that, like we like to see any amount of progress or any sort of, you know, whether, uh, whatever you're looking at, I, I'm, I'm here to support you. So, uh, all right. I think, I think we're pretty near time. These are going to take a while to run. So I'm going to let this run and, uh, we'll see if we see anything interesting and maybe I, maybe I'll have something to post in chat that's interesting or maybe not. <laughs> Yep. So you, when you post on the chat, it will be this notebook and the JSON file, which is now something we can replicate on his side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went through that real quick with the. I, I used QGIS real real quickly hmm. to kind of do that. Uh, partly because it allows, you know, it just gives. It's you know, part of it is just kind of your situational awareness and seeing what's going on. But all you have to do is, you know, you can you can just export a feature, uh, a feature layer. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, that was helpful. Thank you so much, Brian. Any question for Brian from anybody? I just want to thank him, uh, Ken, and uh, I want to be in touch with him to explain to more explain our expectations. So, uh, if if it's possible to get. Uh, uh, the expected result, I think I can share uh, the result here uh, within our team. Thank you. So uh, once you get some results, Brian, we can try to schedule a time with Paco. And okay. we explain to him so that uh, he's able to present to his colleagues, which is very nice to bring more people to use the platform. Thank you so much, Paco, for being our champion. Anyone else with a comment or feedback or closing remarks? And if Edward can uh, we do yeah, yeah. Yes, Edward. Oh, okay. Okay, so um so thank you, Brian, for the um for the presentation, which was very great. Um yeah, I really enjoyed it also. Um and hoping to hear from Marco do the presentation next week, which we will be expecting it. Um the OD ODC conference is also ongoing and the women women's sprint is running. So kindly uh, feel free to pass by and see the things we can also learn from that section also. Uh, yes. Okay, Ken. Thank you so Let's much. See. Uh, I know Goose wants a meeting after this one. He's it's already written on his face. Uh, we can just uh, <laughs> put in some, some camera for a screen photo so that we can see you next week smiling, everybody.